For such tiny things, nanoparticles can pose some big questions. Are they safe to use? Do they harm the environment? And should they be banned until we know that they are 100% safe? As nanotechnology is at the cutting edge of technology, very little is known about the long-term effects of the nanomaterials present in commercial products and the effects that they may have on living organisms and the environment. As a result, the safety of products containing nanoparticles has not been proven, but this does not mean that they should be banned until nanotechnology is 100% safe. It is essential to look at where they are currently found, what they do, what likelihood of detrimental effects, and possible alternatives to prohibiting their use. I will be focusing on these issues in this presentation. The classification of nanoparticles based on size rather than their chemical products mean that a blanket ban may exclude potentially beneficial as well as harmful products from the market. Nanoparticles are present in many areas of our lives, perhaps even without us realizing it. Wrinkle-free shirts, carpets that don't stain, socks that don't smell, bandages with antibacterial silver, toothpaste that can repair cavities, sturdy and long-lasting coatings for buildings and furniture, and even refrigerators which claim to keep food fresher. We're also exposed to nanoparticles from sea spray or volcanic activity, or, incidentally, from diesel engine emissions or welding fumes. If the intention of banning these materials was to protect the public from them, then this ban will prove ineffective, as their cur current proliferation and natural presence would mean that exposure to nanoparticles will remain ongoing. As with the other man-made substances, nanoparticles may pose a risk to the environment through bioaccumulation, where the concentration in organisms increases as a material progresses through the food chain. Silver nanoparticles are known to be a powerful bactericide, killing harmful as well as beneficial bacteria that play an important role in the cycling of nutrients. Theoretically, nanoparticles could absorb substances such as herbicides, which would enhance their ability to detrimentally affect the environment. However, the potency of silver nanoparticles mean that the amount of substance used is very small and currently its environmental impact is dwarfed by other issues such as industrial dumping of pollutants, erosion and increased salinity of soils that result in measurable environmental degradation. Also, the use of nanoparticles in water and air purification and solar energy production suggests that banning their use would reverse progress in the efforts to conserve the environment. The thing that makes nanoparticles so attractive, their large surface area to volume ratio, is also what makes them potentially toxic. This is because they are more reactive than larger particles, and this increases their uptake into cells, tissues and organs. Several test tube studies have shown that nanomaterials can cause damage to cells and tissues in a number of ways, including changing the DNA and causing mitochondrial damage. However, these tests only demonstrate the effect of nanoparticles on parts of the body in isolation, rather than on the human body as a complete entity. This will be like testing the effect of alcohol on a sample of muscle cells, which was a result in tissue death without the circulatory and excretory systems which filter and eliminate alcohol from the body. Also, the concentration of the nanomaterial may not reflect the typical daily exposure to nanoparticles. Cosmetics and sunscreen are applied externally to the skin, which has been shown to stop nanoparticles from entering the body. Other studies have linked Crohn's disease, which can lead to cancer, autoimmune diseases, Alzheimer's, Huntington's and Parkinson's to nanoparticle exposure. However, the links are tenuous, as nanoparticles are one of many factors that can trigger these conditions, rather than being a primary cause. Some forms of carbon nanotubes have been shown to be as harmful as asbestos if inhaled in sufficient quantities. However, there is no evidence that nanotubes can become airborne, become inhaled and reach the upper lining of the lung, or whether any individuals inhale them in quantities high enough to do harm. Although the complete risks of nanoparticles are unknown, current experimental results suggest that they do not pose immediately excessive risk to society. Although the possible implications of the use of nanoparticles on individual society and the environment remain uncertain, it is evident that regulation and management of nanotechnology has not kept up with the development. The National Nanotechnology Strategy Task Force stated that there was an immediate need to fund and coordinate research into the risks arising from health, safety and environmental issues relating to nanotechnologies. It recommended that a dedicated federal office be established, a regulatory framework investigated and public discussion initiated urgently. Whilst nanotechnology does pose some risks, so does all new technology, and it is with thorough investigation into the risks and sufficient testing of products that safety can be improved without sacrificing technological progress or hindering the potential benefits of smarter, smaller and safer products of the future.